Well, they say you never have enough time whenever you're having fun. So we'll just go real quick. Answers to these questions of economy, security, and corruption. Now, I'm going to ask, beginning from the Abuja studio, ladies and gentlemen, beginning from the SDP National Secretary, tell us how you're going to handle issues around the economy, value for the money, minimum wage. How would your party be handling this if we're going forward? Well, fundamentally speaking, our presidential candidate uh, has been the governor of the state. And if you look at his record, he has done tremendously well in terms of improving the economy of the states. At the bigger horizon, he, he has been a national figure. He's participated in a lot of uh, uh, economic issues, political issues in shaping the, 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 the political atmosphere of our country. And of course, uh, mentioning the issue of handling the, the economy and the, and the security. If you look at it critically, what we are suffering today is a completely collapse of the security which is leading to the collapse of the economy as well. Any country that are, cannot secure its own cannot be able to create the conducive atmosphere to generate economic activities that will create employment and other necessary services that the country desires to have. So when it comes to understanding the dynamics and the topography of, of, of our own needs as a nation, we have provided to Nigerians a capable hand who understands these dynamics, who has been around the cycle, and who understands the, the needs of the younger generations, uh, what they need to Mr. be Gabba, part of a society. The question I asked, Mr. Gabba, a sense of participation. I asked the question, how would you handle? Is it by the person you're putting forward? Is that how you're going to start handling the situation? You have a structure on ground, and those structures need to be looked into. And then you begin to rejig the, the economic structures that will generate employment, that will generate capacity around, around the economy. And, and that's what we are talking about. So far, the economy is not performing. So you need someone who understands where the structural problem is coming from to deal with them and fix them properly so that you generate some of these activities that will give people a sense of belonging and employment and you fix the economy properly to be able to pay people adequately to take care of their necessary demands. This, this is what we are talking about. There's no way you can invent something new outside what you have right now. You have to deal with what you have. You have to repackage it. You have to deal with what is necessary to, to engage the system properly, to engage Nigerians. Every year we are graduating All right. hundreds of All thousands right. of uh, uh, students. Thank you, Mr. Gabao. For, if we could just hand over to Ms. Kato, the need for new ideas. He's saying you need to understand what you have now and then repackage it to get something better. What do you think, especially when you look at that, the, that notion of new ideas coming into the picture? Well, we are glad that our presidential candidate has spoken about having, you know, his policy document. He's not going to be making empty promises. We're not just going to say, oh, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, without the basis of a policy document. And that's what I'm happy about. We also have to look at the fact that these two men are very great businessmen. That is the person of Peter Obi and Atiku Abu Al Haji Atiku Abu Bakar. These are concrete businessmen who have handled businesses and have also handled states. You can see the work that Peter Obi did in Anambra State. And then Atiku Abu Bakar has been able to sustain out of government for so long. You can see the, pro the progress they have made. I think that we are moving away from what seems like failed socialism. We can't keep on giving handouts when we can make the economy better. And so we're looking at policies that would take us back towards, you know, capitalist, uh, capitalist society. I like what Mr. Hashim said, that when they got tired of the PDP, they went back to their businesses. It showed that the PDP made Nigeria conducive enough for people who did not want to remain in politics to go back and they could function well there. So that's what we're looking at. I personally, as a young person, I prefer a capitalist society. I want candidates that represent that. And these two men represent that. I think that okay. we're taking these people out of dependency on government. Right. We're trying to remove a system that, you know, makes people ex extremely dependent on government and patronage and get them back to being self-sufficient. What I would say is let's wait for that policy document. But based on this, I know where we are headed already. All right. Thank you, Mr. Oniru. What's your take? What will be the new ideas oh, that will come thank in? You. Thank you. Thank you so uh, very much. I mean, I, I begin to wonder, I mean... Uh, yes, go ahead. Hello. I begin to wonder uh, what exactly we are driving at when we begin to say new ideas. The only ideas that we need are, are the ideas that are already showing positive outcomes. We all know the state of infrastructure in this country uh, before 2015. We know the state of agriculture in this country before 2015. 
We know that our solid minerals were locked down and nothing was happening there before 2015. Mm -hmm. We can continue to look at all of this. We know we've been on, on the issue of power generation for donkey years and we made no progress. And we can plot the graph. We can see where we started in 2015. We can, we can get selfish about it and ask yourself that in my state, uh, what is going on uh, as far as this uh, government is concerned. You can see the roads, you can see the rail system, you can see the major issue of diversification that had been there for donkey years and nobody could do anything about it. You could see that this government now has taken practical step and by having diversification, we already seen the outcome uh, reflecting on the economy. Uh, whether we like it or not, um, we, we, we like quoting uh, foreign magazines to support whatever claims we are making. Um, yeah, Forbes just told us that uh, Nigeria has the best ec economy in Africa for those that, who feel that matters to them. Um, okay. But right. the important thing is that we are seeing it. Right. And, and we, are, we are making progress and uh, we are moving forward in this country. And uh, all we need to do is to keep our eyes on the ball. All right. And Thank you. continue to, to do the best we can. Yeah. All right. Mr. Laipo Hashim. On the economy, we have a new Nigerian economic development program to take Nigeria GDP from $510 billion, it's based in 2013, to a $4 trillion economy within 10 years. That's the only size of economy that will make Nigeria to be at par with Malaysia, Thailand, countries that we were at par with at independence. And it's going to be private sector driven by dismantling all the bottlenecks that will not allow investment into the country. Nigeria is a preferred investment destination. As an investor myself, anywhere you can have 20, 25% rate of return. Investors want to take their money there. But you know the issues with regulation, licensing, administration, where public officers want to throw themselves you know, into the way of investment. And these true executive actions, the right appointment, we can dismantle even in 120 days. You need that size of economy to take Nigeria out of poverty. Okay. That's on the economic I front. I think that's a good place to hang it there because we're really, really out of time. Thank you so much, Mr. Benga Olayakbo Hashim, who's the presidential candidate of the Third Force and the People's Trust Party. Also, we have the National Secretary of the Social Democratic Party, Alhaji Sheo Gabam, the Secretary of the PDP's General Next, Ms. Ndi Kato, and the National Publicity Secretary of the All Progressive Congress, Mr. Lanre Isao Nilu. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for sharing your thoughts. And that's our show for today. I want to thank you for letting us be a part of your evening. Good night.